Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, welcome to Global Report. I'm your host, Lily Ong. We have with us today Mr. Pavel Karapetian, who is a businessman here in Singapore. Welcome to the show, Mr. Pavel. Yes, hi, hello. Hi. Um, now, Mr. Pavel, how long have you been in Singapore? Uh, I moved to Singapore 10 years ago uh -huh. and I live here for almost 10 years. Almost 10 years now. Um, well, we're here at the new Armenian Heritage Gallery in Singapore. And this is also the first Armenian Museum in Asia, am I correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, it was opened exactly one month ago on 24 of May. We had a big celebration, we had a big opening. And it's become the first uh, heritage center, first heritage museum in uh, Southeast Asia. So it was supported by um, uh, community in Singapore. Mm -hmm. We had a committee who worked for almost one and a half years mm -hmm. on design, on fittings, and as well we had a big support from some Armenians living outside. And as well, uh, this project was supported by National Heritage Board of Singapore as well. Wonderful. Now, from the time of inception, when was the idea first, when did it first come about? Oh, the idea came about seven years ago. Seven years yeah, ago, right. But uh, it was just an idea. And uh, for so many years, actually, we don't have much funds. And whatever we raised, it was used mainly for our Armenian church, our church building itself because it's much older and it needs much more attention mm -hmm. as a national monument. Slowly, slowly we started raising the funds and we had a big donation from one of our uh, friends uh, from Russia. He based in Russia, but usually come to Singapore and he offered his help. So that was like kickoff to start this project. Is and he Armenian or is he actually he's Russian? Armenian. He's, he's Armenian. Armenian. He was born in Armenia, but he lives in Russia. Mm -hmm. And his uh, daughter, uh, she studies in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So they lived here for almost three years. So that's why Singapore was chosen. Yes, correct. correct. I see. Now, um, when did the first uh, Armenians first arrive in Singapore? When did the early, early Armenians first arrive Actually, in Singapore? Actually, they arrived together with Ruffles uh, in 1819. Wow. Uh, Ruffles came to Singapore with East Indian Company in January 1819, and next year there'll be 200 years anniversary. And Raffles is Sir, Sir yes, Sanford Sir, Raffles, who's yes, the founding Sir, father of Singapore. Correct, correct. and uh, actually, Armenians, uh, they moved to this region about 300 years ago, but initially they were based in India, and slowly together with East Indian Company, they moved to Bangladesh, to Myanmar, to uh, Malaysia, and then later to Singapore. From uh, 1820, there was already a company founded here, Armenian by Armenian, which was uh, mainly for import and export. So Armenians, they were traders and they were first developers in Singapore. So they first arrived as businessmen and traders. Correct, and correct. They started their businesses and slowly another Armenians uh, moved here and uh, they start doing and uh, started doing another businesses as well. How large was the community back then when it when they oh, when they first came? In Trinius, the, there was only few Armenians, 15, 16. But when the church was built in 1835, there were only five families. So it was like only 30, five families. Yes, 80, 35 Armenians living in Singapore. It was amazing. Like when you think uh, Singapore was tiny, small uh, fisherman village, and only few uh, families. Uh, were able to build such a big church. Uh, I was just gonna ask, how did five families bring about the establishment of the the first uh, church in Singapore? It was first. Uh, it was not first. Uh, there were a few uh, small churches before. Actually, even Armenians they had a play for pray, uh, which was uh, uh, next to current Raffles Hotel, which mm -hmm. was later also was founded by uh, Armenian family. So they had a small place, then they uh, write a letter to Queen uh, and uh, requested us for a land to build a bigger church. So uh, and this is how the church was built. But this uh, is the oldest church today. At the moment it's the oldest church and currently it's uh, the oldest building which was kept and changed for 160 years. Wow. We did not have any structural changes for this building for 160 years. And also it was one of the first buildings in Singapore which uh, had electricity. So oh. the first electrical lamp and first electrical fan was installed in our church as well. 
You mentioned that it was the first uh, historic monument it in Singapore. It was the first, uh, uh, this building became the first national monument. It was gazetted by government, by the Singapore National Heritage Board mm -hmm. in 1973. So mm -hmm. it's become the first national monument of Singapore. Mm. I think that's amazing. You mentioned, you know, that the Armenians were small in numbers, but you built, you know, this church uh, that's still standing today. Uh, and you mentioned that the Raffles Hotel was also started by the Armenians? Yeah, it was started by Armenians, but it was much later than uh, the church was built so currently I, I think this year they celebrated 130 years anniversary of Raffles Hotel yeah the, actually uh, the founders of Raffles Hotel Sarkis brothers they did, they did not just uh, built Raffles Hotel in Singapore they had a few hotels in the region uh, and which are still standing uh, Strand Hotel in Myanmar, in yeah, Yangon, Yangon, another hotel in Penang, uh, Eastern Oriental. Mm. This is a Raffles Hotel in Singapore and a hotel in Surabaya. And actually, they were not just only hotels, uh, standalone hotels. It was the first hotel chain in Asia. So wow. travelers, they were able to book. I mean, now we have new technologies right. and we're able to book all our itineraries uh, straight away. But uh, before that it was quite difficult so during those times uh, travelers from Europe they were able to book four hotels so the entire itinerary uh, and uh, travel in, in, in Asia. Were they the first to study the concept of chain hotels? It was the first hotel chain. It the was the first hotel in, 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 in the Asia. world? No, oh, in, in, the, Asia. in Asia. In Asia. Asia. Okay. In Asia. It was the first in Asia. That's still an amazing feat. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Of Especially course. During and those, those hotels are iconic hotels uh, in all the countries. Strange Hotel is one of the most famous hotels in Myanmar, mm -hmm. uh, Eastern Oriental in Penang, and Raffles Hotel is iconic hotel right, uh, okay. in Singapore. It's one of the symbols of Singapore. Yes, yeah, I mean with the colonial structure and yeah, everything, yeah. yeah. Now, um, what about uh, what about the other uh, um, Armenians? Uh, so we have the Raffles Hotel, we have the church, <coughs> and I think the national newspaper was also started uh, by Armenians, yeah, am I correct? Yeah, currently the most sellable newspaper, Straight Times, uh, was also founded by Armenians guy, Khachik Mopsis, uh, he started that business, well, later he sold it, but actually it was founded by him and currently uh, Straight Times is the most popular newspaper and uh, I think every day uh, uh, one, one million of copies are sold uh, in, in, in Singapore. So uh, another um, impact in Singapore history uh, was made by um, Agnes Joachim or her Armenian names, uh, her name uh, is uh, Ashkan Havakimian. So actually, uh, she hybrided the national flower national of flower. Singapore, uh, national orchid, and uh, later it was named after her, Miss Vanda Joachim Orchid. Mm -hmm. And it, now it's, it's a symbol of Singapore. It's, it's really amazing. It's proud for us that symbol of Singapore is named after Armenian lady and has Armenian name, Armenian right. roots. And not only that, uh, I think um, uh, because orchid has become the national flower, when we have VIPs coming through, we have a habit of naming some of the flowers after the VIPs. Correct, to, correct. Yeah. But uh, actually, that was also the first hybrid. The first hybrid, the yes. In the world, uh, which was done by I Armenian mean, lady. Mm. Now, she had a pretty sad story. I understand that she passed away pretty young. Uh, and yeah. In fact, a couple months after she won an award for the flowers, is that correct? Uh, she, she won an award for a few other plans but during her time of course she was not so famous mm. and she became famous when uh, the flower becomes a national national mm -hmm. symbol of Singapore yeah and her legacy still lives on yeah, today because it's, it's our national it's, uh, flower uh, this year uh, we celebrated 125th anniversary mm. Mm, I see. Now fast forward, fast forward to today, how large is the Armenian community in Singapore it's today? It's still very tiny. Uh, for so many years we never had more than 100 uh, Armenians living on the same time. Currently mm -hmm. we have 40, 50 Armenians living here. Just for, mm. and Are uh, these full-blooded Armenians or, or uh, mixed-blooded? Uh, no, uh, actually uh, uh, community uh, <coughs> Currently, we have uh, Armenians uh, from Armenia, mm -hmm. uh, Armenians living in diaspora from many different countries. Actually, Singapore is a good place for people to work, uh, and Business. most of most of the Armenians are expatriates mm -hmm. who come here and work on a contract basis. So they live here for a few years, 
some of them they become permanent residents, some of them they moved back to, to their home country. So the Armenians in Singapore today are not really Armenians that were descendants from the early Armenians yeah. here, they are the new expatriates. There, there, there is a part uh, from descendants, but mm. it's smaller part I guess. Uh -huh. uh, it's actually the currently community is divided into three parts, descendants, Armenians from Armenia, like myself, and Armenians who came from diaspora. Do they tend to engage in uh, interracial marriages or do they tend to stay in their own clay? Uh, it depends actually. Mm -hmm. The community is so small so we have mm -hmm. all different uh, ways of... Uh, and how active is this uh, 40 to 50 Armenian We are quite people? active actually. Uh, we are quite active every 2-3 months. We don't have a permanent priest in Singapore but every 2-3 months we invite priests from neighborhood countries. Mm -hmm. We have a big community in Australia. We have a diocese in Australia. And we invite priests from Australia, from Yangon, from India, and we have a services. So the church is still alive, and it's 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 uh, <coughs> uh, community is always happy to come for the services, mm -hmm. and uh, not only for services. Almost every month uh, we gather together. We celebrate all Armenian holidays, all Armenian uh, I was days, about to ask you, what kind of Armenian festivals are being celebrated here in National Singapore? days, uh, Easter, Christmas, so yeah. Do you get together and do yeah. cooking? Yeah, and yeah we do. We, 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 we bring some food, we some Armenian drinks, some Armenian uh, home food. Uh -huh. yeah. Is there any Armenian restaurants to be found uh, here? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> unfortunately We're not, waiting for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking for it. Actually, <laughs> the, the, the idea came a few years ago, but it's also quite tricky. Uh, yeah. FMB business in Singapore is quite tricky, so we are thinking about this. Yeah. Hopefully, after we finish all this project, it may come true. And Armenian food is, uh, it, it takes a lot of labor, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah and it, it's uh, not very common for this region mm. uh, because we eat a lot of meat. This place is more used to uh, seafood and yeah. Would it be easy to find the ingredients you you, you need to uh, you start an Armenian of restaurant many, here? Many ingredients can be found here, but uh, yeah, um, of course, we will need some spices, mm -hmm. some special ingredients from Armenia as well. I see. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pavel. We're going to take a little short break. When we come back, we'll learn to learn more about uh, the Armenian history, not just in Singapore, but regionally. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so you. much. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Welcome back to the show. This is Global Report and I'm your host Lily Ong. We're here today with Mr. Pavel Karapetian, who's here with us to share with us the Armenian history in Singapore and beyond. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Pavel. Hello. Now, Mr. Pavel, um, three years ago there was the 100 years memory day of the Armenian genocide. Would you mind sharing some of the history of that with us, please? Well, unfortunately, it's one of the darkest pages in our history. Uh, 100 years ago, during World uh, War One, um, Ottoman Empire uh, were fighting against uh, Russia and a few other countries, and they uh, took that opportunity to uh, kill, to uh, and to wipe. I, I can say wipe of the Armenian uh, population in. Uh, 
current uh, Turkey, but uh, for us it's uh, West, uh, Western Armenia. So more than one and a half million of Armenians were killed and about one uh, million were deported to different countries. That is why at the moment we have about three million Armenians living in Armenia and uh, seven to eight million of Armenians living outside. So and we call them diaspora. Our diaspora is spread all over the world. Uh, the biggest communities are currently in uh, Russia, in America, in France and few other countries. Now, what's the reason for the invasion of the Ottoman Empire? It seems that Armenia has been a target even before the Ottoman Empire. What is the reason for that? Is it because of your natural resources? Is it, is it because of your strategic uh, location? Uh, not really, actually. Uh, I can say it was because of the religion. Uh, Armenia is one of the Christian countries. In fact, it's the first. Uh, we were the first the Christian country, but in the region, it's uh, only Armenia and Georgia, which are still uh, Christians. Ar Armenians were quite rich and successful in Turkey, so uh, by doing this, Ottoman Empire actually acquired uh, all the wealth and uh, uh, businesses which were uh, in, in uh, current uh, Turkey. So if I hear correctly, um, there was the reason uh, pertaining to religion, there was a compulsion to convert. Uh, correct, correct. It was because of the religion, it was because of nationality, it was because of the wealth, because of the success of Armenians. And how long was this, uh, this massacre uh, taking place? Actually, it was started in uh, early uh, 1980s and then continued for many years, but main uh, killings and uh, deportation was started in 1915. And why we choose 24th of April as a memory day? Because during that day, the biggest uh, part of uh, Armenian uh, community was arrested in Istanbul, including uh, famous uh, poets, uh, mm. composers, uh, uh, businessmen, and uh, that day was, I can say, the, the, the worst in, in, in that history. And Armenia has the largest diaspora community, more than any other nationality throughout the world, is that correct? No. Since you said only 3 million are living in Armenia and, and 6 to 8 are outside of Armenia. Outside of Armenia, right. yes, correct. Uh, and unfortunately it was due to this uh, genocide. And we are thankful to um, countries who recognized uh, the genocide. At the moment, 28 countries uh, recognized it as a genocide. I know that the Dutch were the, the re most recent one to, to recognize it. Uh, as Dutch, as German, as Russia was German, Dutch. Uh, yeah, at the moment it's 28 countries, inclu including 48 states of uh, United uh, States. But uh, country by itself didn't recognize it. And every year on 24 of April, um, for so many years, every American president uh, has a speech on the date uh, for the two Armenians, but so far they did not mm. recognize. They promise it uh, every year before the election. Before, during the campaign. Mm, yeah, for the campaign to get Armenian votes, but unfortunately mm. it's not recognized yet. So, um, what are the present day Armenians doing to get more countries to, to, to recognize this genocide? Is there a movement? Is there? Of course, there is a movement not only in Armenia. Uh, our diaspora is uh, forcing, uh, whenever there are Armenians, they are forcing their local governments, local communities to recognize it. And every year we have more and more countries who are joining for this uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe there's a very strong Armenian community in Los Angeles too. Out of it's the one of the biggest. United it's States, one right? of the biggest. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there were few districts, suburbs in, in uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which are uh, much populated by Armenians, Little Armenia, Glendale, uh, Burbank. So these are the places when Armenian community used to live at, uh, in, in these days. Yeah. Now going back to history, how successful were they in, tr you know, trying to convert, or in how how successful were they? Uh, the, the Ottoman Empire. I mean, no. If religion was one of their prime goals, how successful? Of course, they? there were Armenians who were converted, and till now there are a lot of Armenians who recognize the Armenian roots, but they were converted to uh, uh, Islam, Islam, but they still keep the roots. I met few Armenians even here in Singapore. 
recognized the, the Armenian rules, but unfortunately they lived in Turkey, so like culturally they were grown up in, 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 in different environment, but they still recognize their roots. Mm -hmm. Now if we look at Armenia today, it's about one-tenth of the size of what it used to be. Um, unfortunately. Yeah, despite the small size, are, are there efforts on the part of the government in trying to get the diaspora community back into Armenia? We have very, uh, very strong ties with diaspora and there are a lot of uh, uh, programs and activities in, in Armenia to bring uh, diaspora to, 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 to uh, involve them in, in uh, current development of Armenia. Every year there are uh, many camps in Armenia, especially organized for kids, students uh, from diaspora. Uh, and uh, every year we have more and more uh, Armenians from uh, diaspora joining, uh, coming to Armenia and joining for this initiative. Does, does Armenia welcome these people with blood ties to Armenia? Do they welcome them to become citizens of Armenia again? Is there Definitely, we will be, uh, I, as I know, uh, there are special rules uh, which makes uh, much easier to get uh, the citizenship of Armenia f for those who uh, uh, <coughs> interested uh, to be Armenian citizens as well. Mm. Now there's also the territorial dispute in uh, Nagorno? Nagorno Karabakh, Artsakh, we call yes, it Artsakh. Right. Yeah, right. The historical name is Artsakh. Yes, so I, I know there was a temporary peace that was brokered by the Russian, but after the fall of the Soviet Union, the dispute came about again. How is the situation today? Uh, actually, it's still uh, ongoing. Uh, Karabakh was uh, not Artsakh. Historical Artsakh was not recognized as an independent country yet. And unfortunately, uh, the military action are still ongoing. Uh, two years ago, on uh, 2nd of April, Azerbaijan tried to uh, move forward in few direction but uh, our uh, soldiers they succeeded to stop them and uh, they made a big uh, damage to, to, to uh, military Azerbaijan uh, military and army so it's still uh, not peace but uh, it's not uh, war but every day there's something uh, happening there and unfortunately we are losing a lot of brave soldiers, a lot of young uh, Armenians uh, on, uh, on the border. What about intervention from the other international players like Russia, UN Security Council? <coughs> what, what is their stance? Of course, Armenia, uh, Armenia is quite small and uh, we, are, we were always between the big players. As I said, we were always in a crossroad of empires and big countries. And yeah, we, we, we hope uh, the big countries will uh, take actions against uh, Azerbaijan, but uh, it's not always possible you now because uh, uh, politicians, they have their own way of thinking and it's not always uh, Succeeding. It, it sounds like they're actually advocating for the territory to be ceded to Azerbaijan. Um, for sake of peace, is this something that Armenia can compromise on? <coughs> actually, uh, the historical arts have we compromised for the last hundred years. That's right. uh, and uh, unfortunately, for so many years during Soviet time, the, the huge territories was given to Azerbaijan. Uh, Nakhichevan, which is currently in Azerbaijan, it was also a historical Armenia. One of our most successful cities, uh, Julfa historical cities, was there. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we had a huge, uh, big place in Julfa with uh, old Armenian Khachkars, which was recognized as a heritage by UNESCO, but it was fully destroyed, it, uh, it was ruined, and there is no even signs of that uh, Khachkars now in, in that, that place. So for so many years uh, we compromised, but uh, I guess we can't do it anymore. Mm. And uh, Mao Ararat, that, that's, you know, the symbol, it's a symbol that's of Armenia. Symbol symbol. Of yeah, it's now it's sitting on the land of yeah, Turkey. Yeah, it's sitting in Turkey, but it's always in our heart and mm. it's always in, in our mind. Right. Oh. Could you tell us about this? <coughs> uh, this is the map uh, of uh, genocide uh, 
uh, wherever, wherever it was uh, taken you can see the big cities the big ones are the biggest uh, cities where uh, Armenians were killed and uh, from where the Armenians were deported so actually this part is Western Armenia but currently we have only a small piece left which mm. is current independent Armenia is, is there a particular area that has the highest concentration of the uh, actually you, you can see there yeah, this is the, it's all over the the current Turkey mm. and from here they were deported to Syria to to other uh, uh, eastern countries to Cyprus to Greece and by sea they were deported to Europe to America and to South uh, America so there's West and there's East. Is that what brings about the, you know, there's also the Western Armenian language and the Eastern Armenian yeah, language? Yeah, the, uh, they're a bit different because traditionally Western Armenian uh, was used in, in, in uh, West, West part and modern Armenia was always changing for the last hundred years. But still we understand each other and of course it's same language and same So the tradition. Western Armenian speaking people will understand the Eastern mm, advice Definitely, advice. definitely we will understand. I, I think we will understand by heart as well, so it's not just mm. only the language. What about the written form? Is it entirely different? Uh, it's, uh, it's almost same, it's almost same. The, the alphabet is same, exactly the same. The only pronunciation and the, the, the using different words, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean that's the, the spelling of the words are, are different. Mm -hmm. What about the preservation? We talked briefly about food and restaurants earlier. What about mm -hmm. the preservation of the culture in all these diaspora communities? Uh, actually, most of them they preserve it quite uh, well. And uh, a lot of Armenians in diaspora they speak in Armenian, they celebrate all Armenian holidays. Do they visit? Do they? Uh, as I said, every year we have hundreds of thousands of uh, Armenians from the diaspora visiting Armenia every year wow. thousands and thousands of Armenians are coming mm. back to their country and uh, it's not just only once the every year it's, there are subsequent visitors and uh, we are happy we welcome them with big heart mm. and wait welcome them all every time now, Mr. Pavel, we know that even though Armenians are small in numbers, but they have some amazing contributions to mankind, not just in Singapore, but throughout the world. Could you name some of the accomplishments, please? Yeah, as I mentioned, we have 3 million of Armenians living in Armenia. We have about 7 uh, to 8 million living outside. And uh, of course, uh, Armenians, they contributed to a different sphere of uh, uh, industry, arts, culture, music. Um, not much people know, but the first ATM was also invaded by Armenian Simijan, and we have a lot of famous artists. Of course, we are proud to have uh, Charles Aznavour, uh, the famous French singer, uh, Serge Sarkisian, uh, American singer. We have uh, sportsmen, David Nalbanzian, Andrei Agassi, and one of our latest star, uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan, who is currently playing uh, in Arsenal. And uh, actually, Armenians they contributed to all the parts of the, the industries and uh, culture. That's wonderful. That's truly wonderful. Thank you. Now, Mr. Pavel, could I also get some of your thoughts on what's going on back home? I know here in Singapore things are very peaceful, but I know that um, Armenia recently um, transitioned from a presidential system to a parliamentary system, and there was also a, a change in uh, prime minister and, and presidency. Um, I actually, uh, we had so-called uh, revolution, peaceful. Uh, uh, we call it revolution of love, revolution of peace uh, two months ago. Uh, Armenia became independent uh, about 25 years ago and unfortunately the, the party which were ruling the country for 25 years, they did not succeed in uh, many uh, mm, uh, directions, especially they were not able to fight against the corruption, mm -hmm. so uh, which had a big impact on uh, ca the, the country progress. So people in Armenia, they were not happy. And they happen uh, well, 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 with uh, the, the process, uh, with uh, the development, 
So and uh, so the since previous 20, 20, since twenty five years ago, has it always been Sir Sarkisian who has been a prime minister two times? No, prime no, minister, no. Two no. Times we had minister. three presidents. The first president was Levon Terpetrosan, and after a few years, uh, uh, Robert Kocharan. Uh, but was Sarkisian the prime minister? He was that time? eight years. Uh, he uh, Sir Sarkisian was a president for eight years, and he decided to become a prime minister so when did he become president what year was uh, that uh, eight years ago so okay. he uh, <clears throat> he was in place for two subsequent uh, terms mm -hmm. so for eight years and then uh, when last year country has been changed to parliament uh, parliamentary uh, Country's so system, uh, he decided to become a prime minister, but uh, citizens, uh, people in Armenia, they didn't uh, agree. With and he, him. he had actually maxed out his term, but he amended the constitution. So he, he amended the constitution and he uh, was sure he will be able to continue as a prime minister, but plans have been changed and now we have a new prime minister. And just within the last uh, few uh, few weeks, I can say it's just only one month, one and a half months, uh, there was a big protest, uh, progress in uh, fighting against the corruption in Armenia. We had few big cases and uh, I guess it will go on. Now, if we look at Middle East today, we know it's a complete mess. You know, the removal of Saddam Hussein and then the removal of Gaddafi in Libya. Um, and there was so much bloodshed. But here in Armenia, there was a revolution, but it was bloodless. And yeah, we, during the revolution, uh, everyone mentioned, uh, we, we, nobody can compare what happened in Armenia with uh, happenings in, in Middle East. And it was totally different uh, uh, movement. And so there was no foreign intervention. No foreign domestic. intervention, there was no foreign impact. So actually, uh, people of Armenia, um, they decided they want to have a new prime minister, they want to have a new uh, party, ruling party, they want to have a new, uh, new direction. So that was all. So there was no any international imp impact from big countries, from European Union, Russia or America. So this which makes our revolution, uh, I can say, unique. And we call it uh, revolution of peace, revolution of love. So fortunately, yeah, uh, uh, citizens, uh, people in Armenia, they succeeded in, 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 in the action. So. Well, congratulations on thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, we hope that this will bring to Armenia to another level in its development, and uh, will uh, the country will progress uh, much faster than before. And I think the way that you can, you guys could bring about revolution in a peaceful manner, that's something that the world can look up to and and you know follow in of the steps. Of course, yeah. We also like last uh, few weeks, people were thinking that the revolution may stop. Uh, the tourism in uh, Armenia, but it's become vice versa. So people are coming to Armenia to see how the country, uh, how uh, to see the country where the revolution can be done in such a peaceful way. So this pr even promote uh, actually a revolution promote our country and not uh, made any disadvantages. Well, thank you so much, Lou Favel. Thank you so much for your time you, today. And you. I'm so thank excited you. that we have this um, Armenian Heritage Gallery right here in Singapore, um, you know, the, the first in Southeast Asia, too. So, well, thank you so much. Thanks for. Pleasure.